Peter upon them. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear of Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these our laws in our hearts to beseech thee. Hear ye, Glory to the God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards heaven. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to hear us, and grant that we to whom thou hast given an hearty desire to pray, may by thy mighty aid be defended and comforted in all dangers and adversities. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle was written in the fifth chapter of the first epistle general of Peter, beginning at the fifth verse. <clears throat> All of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. <clears throat> humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, <clears throat> whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And the God of all grace, who hath called you into his eternal glory in Christ, after that ye have suffered a while, shall himself restore, establish, strengthen you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Here endeth the epistle. O cast thy burden on the Lord, and he shall nourish thee. When I cried unto the Lord, he heard my voice from the battle that was against me. Alleluia, alleluia. God is a righteous judge, strong and patient, and God is provoked every day. Alleluia. Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. 
I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either one woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. When she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which was lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us man and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. In this season of Trinity Tide, we are receiving an education in living the life of rightly ordered love which constitutes our willed participation in the life of God. Today our education in that life of love begins in earnest, when in our epistle St. Peter speaks of our being clothed with humility. Humble yourselves, he bids us, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Humility, of course, is the opposite of pride, the primal sin, that wish to be other than God has created us to be, has willed us to be. Pride is the wish to love ourselves, or rather to love in ourselves, not what the divine love loved in us, but what we ourselves think is more lovely than that. But, of course, such a disordered love is fundamentally disorienting, for it is a love which refuses to recognize reality, refuses to see the world, including ourselves, and the world's creator for what they are. We cannot be greater than God has willed us to be, for reality, created reality of which we are a part, is simply the creative effect of the divine love. Hence, pride is, in the end, the wish to be God, the wish to substitute our own will for ourselves and for others for God's will. It is the desire to be our own cause, our own lawgiver, and our own end. Yet for all that we wish to be the measure of all things, we can't. For reality simply is what it is, and our refusal to acknowledge reality makes it no less real. 
we place ourselves out of right relation to what is, out of right relation to all of reality, to God, to our neighbor, to all of creation, indeed to ourselves. Hence only the virtue of humility, that attitude of filial dependence upon God, that desire for our own will to decrease as we seek the mind of Christ, so that Christ may increase in us. Only humility can be the practical starting point for learning to live according to, the, according to the divine life that is in us, that life of the divine word, which we live by virtue of our incorporation as members of the mystical body of Christ. Only humility before God, death to self that Christ might live in us, only this will allow us to advance in our life in Christ. Only this will allow us to be turned, converted, conformed to the exalted state of heaven, our fully willed participation in the divine life of the Blessed Trinity. But of course, this is ultimately what we all universally desire, whether we know it or not. We all desire to be in right relation to reality, to our cre Creator first of all, from whence arises any truly right relation to what He has created. This universal desire to know and to love God, and creation only in and for the sake of God, is what motivates us in all our desires, again, whether we know it or not. And this is what we desire when, in the words of our collect, we heartily desire to pray. For all prayer, insofar as it is truly prayer, has as its objective the achievement of union with God. And this desire, whether we recognize it for what it is or not, is hearty indeed. Our desire to know ourselves loved, to know ourselves cherished, valued, all of this, whether we know it or not, is the desire to pray. For it is the desire to know and to love, and to be known and loved by, the only one who can, can and truly does perfectly love us. How many of us have known what it is to open our heart to another, to reveal to that person that which we believe most beautiful in ourselves, only to be scoffed at and rejected. The pain which we have known in such rejection is nothing more or less than a deep desire to pray, a desire to know and to love, to be known by and loved by the infinite love by which alone we are made beautiful and lovable. Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, says St. Augustine, and our hearts are restless till they rest in thee. All the inarticulate restlessness of our hearts, all our fears, all our insecurities, all our sorrows, whatever else may contribute to them, they are ultimately the desire to rest in God. And humility is the practical beginning, that is to say the beginning on our part, upon the road that leads to God. Yet St. Peter speaks about much more in our epistle than just this human virtue, for no human virtue can ever bring us into right relation to God. Humility, that therefore, must be, in the first instance, our acceptance that it is God who brings us into right relation with himself. It is the God of grace who hath already called us into his eternal glory in Christ, who shall himself restore establish, strengthen us in that life in Christ, that participation in the divine life of God. The divine word made flesh, the good and the beautiful shepherd was not content that fallen humanity should be lost. Taking upon himself our human nature, allowing his human life to be taken from him that he might take it up again, he has himself restored and is restoring to perfection his creation. 
Like a good housekeeper, he was not content that humanity should be lost. By assuming our humanity, he has renewed that nature in the image and likeness of his own divine nature, as a lost coin bears the image of Caesar. It is for this reason that in our humility we must cast all our care upon him who careth for us, for it is only as we have been called into eternal glory in Christ, only as Christ has redeemed our nature which could not redeem itself, that we can ever have a share in the divine life in which we were created to participate. Are we anxious? Do our lives seem to have overcome us? No matter how righteous our indignation at our circumstances or at those upon whom we blame our fears and anxieties, their deepest root lies in an unrecognized desire for union with God, in a hearty desire to pray. As he draws us to himself, may we respond in humility, and may humility lead to love. May we know and recognize our hearty desire to pray, our longing for the beautiful one who alone can make us beautiful in himself. And may we pray, as did John the Baptist, whose feast day we celebrate this week, that we may decrease so that he may increase in us, unto whom together with the Father and the Holy Ghost we ascribe all might, power, dominion, and glory henceforth and forevermore. Amen.
earthly grant that they may be made unto us the body and blood of thy only begotten Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The holy sacrifice is offered unto the honour and glory of Almighty God, and in thanksgiving for the death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. As we plead before our Heavenly Father, our Lord's most precious death and sacrifice, let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church throughout the world, particularly this day for the Church of North India. I bid your prayers for the intentions of Mark, National Indigenous Anglican Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Canada, particularly the Archbishop Azaskas, who pray, for, pray as a parish for discernment and help as the Indigenous Church deals with growing tension and stress in Indigenous communities, both urban and reserved, related to age-old issues amplified by the pandemic. That communities may respond in many ways to the increased levels of death in their midst. That the need for pastoral and sacramental leadership in Indigenous communities may be met. We pray especially this week for the parish of Birch Hill Canistino Muscadet in the Diocese of Saskatchewan as it seeks summer interns for its programming. And for the gifts of prudence and wisdom as plans and preparations are made for the next meeting of the Sacred Circle this July. In our diocesan cycle, we are bidden to pray for Ora, the Anglican Church Refugee Alliance. I bid your prayers for absent brothers and sisters, particularly Sam and Anne, for the sake of this parish and all who have desired us unworthy as we are to pray for them, particularly Anastasia, Andrew, Annika, Austin, George, Kristen, Shannon, Ronald, Francis, Anders, John Anderson, the priest, Ben, Jacob, Carl, Melville, Muriel, Michelle, Dave and family, Donna, Diana, Sister Elizabeth, Ellen, Robert, Michelle, Trey, Dion, Grace, James, Barbara, Jim, Jim, Jean, Jennifer, Joshua, Judith, Marlon, Matthew and family, Deborah, George, Roxanne, Valerie, Rachel, Susan, and Denise. And of your charity, pray for the faithful and the in Christ, particularly for the repose of the soul of Leighton Douglas. Bless the Colonel Brown unto them, O Lord. And our right perpetual shine upon them. May the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms. And to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant Andrew, our bishop, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace. Especially to this congregation here present, 
that they take part and to be reverenced and they hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and suffer all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are designed. Bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that, rejoicing in their fellowship, we may call in their good example, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. He that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling on your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our radical sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. God have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in unison of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all men that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ said unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord of all the hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord of Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, O my God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy is given unto the Son of Jesus Christ. Take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. We made there by his one oblation, and himself one offering, for the perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue perpetual memorials of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, the merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures, bread and wine, 
according to my son, our Savior Jesus Christ, his holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may he partake with his most blessed body and blood. In the same manner that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take Sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, 
and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may ever more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy, mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. present in the Holy Sacrament, and since we cannot now receive thee sacramentally, we beseech thee to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves unto thee and embrace thee with all the affections of our souls. Let us never be separated from thee. Let us live and die in thy love. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in thy servants in the fullness of thy strength, in the perfection of thy ways and in the holiness of thy spirit, and rule over every hostile power in the might of thy spirit, and to the glory of thy Father. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve our bodies and souls unto everlasting life. Amen.
be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but seek the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Even to them that believe on his name. 
which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. She conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, the grace the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, the grace the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Hail Mary, the full grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, for thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 